here. It's early, like light in the morning. And I, oh, good. You morning. are live. Right on. Awesome. Well, you know, the time too, where we waste time before we actually start our show, geek it out. <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah. So yeah. Zach, uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. It's a beautiful spring day here in Georgia, minus minus the pollen, but that's the trade-off. Uh, we don't have mountain lions and grizzly bears, I think, like you all do in, in Colorado, uh, but we do have pollen. So. Yeah, I don't know if our mountain lions and grizzly bears uh, come down and like cover your car, <laughs> <laughs> like it gross. Um, but for uh, everyone joining us, hello, welcome to lunch. My name is Kayleen McCabe. I am co-host joined this week again with my uh, awesome fill-in co-host, Zach Fields with Sefka. And Zach, I think you just muted yourself. So, oh, there you go, by the way. Um, so, um, and normally, you know, while, while we're getting started, letting folks uh, join us, we kind of spend a little bit of a moment geeking out. And so let's take this week. I, ha I know you're going to geek out, and I'm actually really excited about where you're going to geek out about, because last week you had a super cool thing that I need to write down, but uh, yeah. So this week, I actually am showing off my uh, jewelry Ooh. collection. Uh, these, these lovely gems were made by Delta Faucets with <laughs> a uh, 3D printer with wax capacity. They are functional, not too heavy. Uh, I was building with students earlier, so got to show off the, the functional fashion. Now I have a toolbox on my face. <laughs> that's amazing. That's that's incredible. The science behind this is actually really cool because the reason that they work is that when they're using the 3D printer, they actually have a hard plastic that's also printed with it. Mm -hmm. And so then when the printing process is done, they can heat it up and that plastic melts out, hence making a functional tool out of a 3D printed plastic oh. thing. Ah! Yeah, that's a that's a gear in there that they they created. And what we tell, what I tell people that, uh, you know, this wonderful world of construction, this this whole playground that I know that you and I get to uh, enjoy all the time is that there's so much science in what we do. You know, these academic teachers are trying to figure it out. I'm like, y'all, every single tool is a simple machine. And there it is. There's a gear that's a simple machine. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I think we've got a lot of upside in, in getting our message out uh, to people, you know, even outside of construction. We've got a lot of good momentum right now. I'm excited. It is. Well, because it's easy, you know, it's applied everywhere. But all right, before we start geeking out too much, because our guest this week, I'm happy to have back because, you know, we were able to interview her a long time ago, way, way back in the early days of our lunch. Um, but what do you have to geek out about this week? Well, I have a book. I've been on a book kick lately and I went I went on a trip and bought some books and I'm really into nature. You know, last year's book was I mean, last last week's book was animal architecture. Yes. Don't buy it. I'm going to send it to you. This Ooh. week is the uh, hidden life of trees. And uh, this is so how good. trees actually communicate with each other. And since trees, since, you know, we, we build with trees and, and trees are great and provide a lot for us. Um, it reminded me of something. We're in this ecosystem, like we're in this workforce ecosystem. The schools are an ecosystem. Uh, I love that Explore the Trades is in there with, with Seth, get together, really working on, on the same mission and, and the messaging. But here's what's cool about this. These trees have things in nature that they count on, that they rely on. And the coolest one that I found so far is the fungal colonies that are at the root tips and they spread miles and miles and miles. And that's the network that trees communicate with each other through. So the trees give us the fungi a little bit of sugar, um, they eat it. And then the, the fungal colonies uh, are a messaging network throughout the, the whole forest. And so uh, the coolest story is, you know, they did a study in Africa and, and a giraffe was eating these, this, this tree that it liked a lot. And that tree through the fungal colony sent a message to trees like 500 yards this way and 500 yards this way. And in and, and all the trees, they, they had a, a poison or something that made their leaves taste rancid, like rise up. And the giraffes knew that they couldn't go to the next tree or even the next tree down. They had to go like a few, a few hundred yards down uh, to, to go get fresh leaves again. And it's science. It's amazing. And so yeah. uh, I love the science and what we build and what we do. I love the science and nature. And it's just it's cool. Well, it's cool seeing also how these relationships kind of repeat themselves. That is a fantastic book. It's one of my favorites. Uh, high five. That you were into. Like, yeah, because I had to because I constantly I drive around, you know, forests and I appreciate the ecosystem. But then at the same time, my brain is like, you'd make some really good furniture. Right. Um, <laughs> so appreciating the whole circle. But yeah. You know, you see how that kind of feeds into thing. And today's guest is also a part of it. Same with K-12. We're feeding into that system and that pipeline, trying to make sure that the, the roots are being nourished and refreshed. 
um, and keeping, you know, kind of that pipeline of good stuff going into our workforce. So, you know, since you are a guest host, do you mind uh, sharing a little bit more about K-12? Because sure. that's something that, you know, hey, we're going to geek out. Let's that's geek right. out all the way, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're convinced that our our schools hold hold the entire next generation of our workforce, and, and even beyond the workforce argument, just a lot of a lot of young people that need opportunity and deserve opportunity. And we think that, and we believe that we are we are at our best, so we can go impact those students before they leave K twelve, before they scatter. Um, sometimes we get them back after the fact, but for the most part, let's build a better system where young people have an opportunity where learning is celebrating celebrated in a hands-on manner that kids understand and apply. Uh, they identified, you know, with school in a very positive manner early on. If you go into a kindergarten classroom, for example, kids love building. It's, it's trucks, it's Lincoln Logs, it's all this. And at some point, if you fast forward, uh, you know, into high school or middle school, you, you may see a very disaffected kid that's pulled away from school because of some experience or not experienced success. So we think and we, we believe that if, if we allow kids to build and create uh, all along the way in an age appropriate manner. We're going to have kids that are much more locked in on understanding what their math is, what their science uh, really is, and, and, that, and, and bring them into a career component when appropriate. So our entire K-12 pipeline work here in SEFCA really takes that approach, attacks our public school system in a good way. We're fighting for them, yeah. uh, works with trade associations, state legislators, uh, philanthropic groups that are fantastic to support our work. And, and we put it all together and and to create a better ecosystem for kids in k-12 and so so excited we we're reaching all the way down now to second grade so next year second grade students through fifth grade are taking construction right alongside art pe and music and construction so everybody gets to try it everybody gets to see hey is this for me do i like it and and, and there's so many that are going to like it and love it we've already seen it in our other locations we have counselor programmings now that what we found is just like Kate, uh, someone that has, has probably changed her mind from an experience in her life of, of there's some lot of much better options for the for our kids than what we might be currently promoting, uh, or at least equally promoting. And, and so programming that allows a, a school counselor that wants to help and impact kids or just another teacher that have some tools to, to do this and to carry out programming, the little builders programming uh, that you're leading, Kayleen, is a great example of that where, um, you know, it's an easy button. We're making, trying to make yeah. it as easy as possible on the people that care and want to make an impact. And we're coming alongside them as a partner to do that. And so very proud of the work so far. We've got a lot of resources to the front lines, even direct teacher funding um, yes. over the past two years, equipment funding. We are, we're going to get you what you need in K-12 if you want to make a difference and an impact. And, and we're, we're just proud to be a partner in that. Well, it's awesome. It does definitely take a lot of different angles to attack this. And so thank you for sharing that. And thank you again for uh, filling in while Scott is, uh, I'm sure, very busy doing very busy things. Uh, and yeah. if he's not, whatever, we're adults. He can have fun too. Right. <laughs> so awesome, Zach. Thank you again for filling in and uh, and helping out. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, chatting with Kate. So Zach, we'll see you next time. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. And Kate, how's it going? <laughs> Good. How are you? I am amazing. And actually, I'm terrific. I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you again because you were one of our first, you know, chats. And so it's really nice yeah. to like, oh, hey, it's welcome nice back. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> um, it's amazing because it has been, I guess, nine-ish months, which that kind of blew my mind. Like, what? All right. So you know, when we chatted last time, you were up to some really good stuff. But yeah. in the last nine months, um, Explore the Trades. Well, first of all, can yeah. you please tell me what you do with Explore the Trades? Yeah, so our organization is focused on bridging that technical talent gap in the service trades of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. So that's what we do. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. The ones that are going to get you really, really employed. Like, oh, my gosh. Those, poorly. Yeah. those those industries oh my gosh they're right so stable oh my gosh yep. um so since then though you've launched a new program called a uh, ready set skilled skilled yeah. am i saying that right is it ready set skilled i love yeah. it yep yeah yeah so <laughs> right i'm ready like ready set skilled Let's so what is ready set skilled tell me about it Right, right. So we are really excited about this partnership. So we've had the opportunity to partner with Next Tech Academy, uh, which is an online technical training program for those who are interested uh, in pursuing those three trades. So it's really geared towards businesses as they grow their own 
workforce, right? We know that gone are the days of, you know, multiple plumbers applying for a job. You know, it's really important as we, as we lessen that skills gap, you know, let's build our own. And so Next Tech Academy has created four levels of content and we've partnered with them to take that basic content, that level one foundational, you know, pre-apprenticeship level content and we're able to package it and hand it off to schools. So mm -hmm. we're really excited about that. And, you know, a little bit of context around this project and it actually came to fruition last summer when we realized, okay, schools probably aren't going back to normal in the fall. And we wanted, we want to ensure that all of the classes, all of those technical hands-on classes don't lose momentum. You know, you don't want those students to, to lose that ground because they can't be in that classroom setting. And so this is all virtual, all interactive content and schools are able to take the content, put it on their learning management system. And then the students and the instructor can work through that curriculum together. So, you know, we want, we want to make it available to schools, you know, as supplementary content, you know, to, to help bridge that gap or, or to focus on different lessons. It's excellent too, because yeah. you know, teachers on the fly had to get super creative right. and getting people excited about the trades anyways was challenging. And now we're like, oh, I'm gonna show you how gravity works through a computer. Like, <laughs> oh. Right. right. Well, that, that's the thing. Like, you know, there, I think before this all happened, you know, there's a lot of excitement and a lot of that momentum towards those technical classes. So, you know, pushing kids out of that environment kind of set us one, one step back. And so, yeah. you know, the best part, well, I think, is that for schools, for us to, to provide that, it's free. The yes. schools don't have to pay for it, thanks to the generous gifts of our industry partners. So we're really excited about that. That is fantastic, because yeah. um, more resources, especially good resources, and you know, that this little lull we're seeing will not last long because when we say trades, you know, I think some people think it's, oh, you're just gonna be on a job site swinging a hammer and like, Right. No. And in fact, your program helps students sort of explore and find because, you know, I know the stat was a few years ago, it took 27 different trades to build a residential house, but that had to have changed because now we're doing, you look at all the technology coming in, right. you know, there's, there's other sciences being involved. So right. talk to me about how students can kind of like find out what there is. Yeah. So, okay. So uh, we have the homepage up, which is awesome. So we created, and this is kind of the spirit of, you know, all the quizzes that you see on Buzzfeed, you know, just fun quizzes like that. So in that spirit, we created our own to say, well, what trade is right for you? So it's linked right on our homepage. So we can click that button and it'll take us to the page. And so you enter in your email so that by the end, you know, you can get information about that specific trade emailed to you. And, and what we did is it's about 30 questions and it's not based on technical assessment. What we did is we took situations and questions to say, do you like reading diagrams? Do you like traveling to a different job site every day? Um, do you like to, you know, take something apart and put it back together to see how it works? So it's really not technical. It's just all of those other pieces that encompass what it's like to work in the residential service business. It's so smart because, yeah. you know, uh, you know, are you a good communicator? Do you, right. do you like doing math sometimes in your head? You know, I mean, these, these right. questions that are important to have, you know, right. and help, help narrow down because, right. oh my gosh. Um, all right, so let's say I take the quiz and yeah. I kind of want to take this one because every assessment I've ever taken tells me I should be a truck driver. And I'm like, yeah, because I want that horn. Like, <laughs> like horn. Yeah. <laughs> so let's say that I take your quiz and uh, it says that I want to be an electrician. You know, yep. Like that is, that is it. Yep. How, what is the next step? Like, how can I find out more information? Yeah. So, so let's say you get that to your email, right? And you get information and we have it on our website as well. Just what's the process to become an electrician? You know, like we've talked about before, everybody knows the process to, to college, right? To get to college. But what do I need to do to become a licensed journeyman electrician? So we talk about apprenticeship and the amount of training hours that it takes. You know, you can't just pick up your toolbox and I'm an electrician, you know, so we're, so we really go through all of those different steps to say, okay, start to finish, 
here's how I do that. So, um, and like, like we have the page right there, it really talks about those different steps and what it means. And just so that people are aware of the, of the background and the training that's involved. You know, we talk about what attributes are good for a person in the trade. We, re we really want to be transparent. So students or career changers know exactly what they're getting into. I love it because it is, it's demystifying the magic trick, right? You know, right. and I think that when parents uh, or maybe students or the public hear something like apprenticeship, yep. they don't understand that that it has the same way, if not more as a bachelor's degree, you know, oh, it's, 100%. it takes years to do this and complete it. And, you know, during that, I'm not going to tap you on the shoulder and be like, Hey, Kate, let's talk about world history for a moment while you're welding. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's serious. And so, all right. right. Um, but this career yeah. tool is actually really great because you can help connect the dots, not just inspiring students, but then right. also talking to employers. So yeah. uh, does your career tool allow students to talk to contractors to get more information on working in the industry? Yeah. Yeah. So we're, this is, so we're actually in development with this right now. So it's not ready, but I'm, I'm really excited for it to, you know, be done. And when we were when we were thinking about this, it's like, well, how can we because I don't think those interested in the trades can really grasp it until they see it, you know, and I think those are the people who are super successful in this industry. Like if I can see it, if I can touch it, then I can put I, then I can connect the dots to really see what it's about. So so the the tool that we're working on right now is to allow contractors to say, you know what, I'm going to have a hiring fair or I'm going to have a ride and decide we'll be able to post it on our website and people can search by zip code to say, oh, if there's anything happening in my area, I can go check it out because, you know, like we've talked about before, if, if, the, if the students and career changers, if they don't hear about it from someone in their social circle, or if they don't hear about it at school, they don't know that these careers exist. And that's our responsibility. You know, we need to say, there's a wealth of opportunity out there. And here's how we can help you connect with the experts in that field so they can show you and tell you what it's all about. It is. It's so important because, um, well, I'll, you know, the statistic forever goes, you had to say something three times or sort of somebody would understand. And then it went to right. seven. And now I think it's like 80 million jazillion times. <laughs> and, and also having that input from other areas, yeah. you know, we really are are kind of pressured sometimes I think they're not pressured uh the notion is still contractors like dirty gruff people and we don't make much money and you know so right. exposing right. parents to multiple avenues to say no look look this is really good right. and we are are happy to do this right so so we've talked about students okay yep. I'm inspired now let's let's say for all of our employers watching and right. they are like hey what we can actually uh yeah. Talk to students who are interested about this. Right. How does Explore the Trades Network um, yeah. make the connection between contractors and those who want to learn more about the business? Yeah. So, so I think a, a really good reminder or just kind of an action plan for those contractors. And I know it's hard right now because the way that people have been able to see our business is to be in that setting, you know, and I and I understand that it's tough right now. We will get to the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, but I think what is, what's, it, what's most impactful is for these trades professionals who have been in the industry for years and years and years, or those who have just come out to say, you know, I'm going to take the opportunity to talk to a class of high school students to say, I'm going to tell you my story. And maybe I was headed to college and for some reason, you know, took a different path. But I think it's important for contractors as the, as the experts to open up their shop and if you can talk with the local school or a workforce development office to say, hey, if you have people interested, bring them to the shop and we can walk around. We can look at the warehouse. We can look at the trucks and we can, we can talk about inventory. You can have some of your technicians talk about what they do on a daily basis. Because I, I think people, you know, everyone takes for granted. If I turn on the faucet, I get hot water. Yeah. <laughs> It's magic. And so I think by by taking the stigma out and say, hey, this is why you have hot water and you're going through the engineering and the technical aspect and and the physics of how everything is, you know, put in the house. Um, so so quick story. 
couple of the contractors that we work with, uh, one in Minnesota, one in Ohio, and they use the collateral that we have at high school fairs. And they were able to talk about what it's like to be a plumber or an HVAC tech. Uh, for example, one of the schools contacted a vendor and they brought a tankless water here. They took it apart so that as the students are walking by the table, that's going to catch your eye. Yeah, cool. So that's really awesome. Yeah. And so you can talk to them and show them how all the components in there work together. And that's how you have hot water. So, you know, like you said earlier, you have to kind of pull the curtain back and say, well, here's, here's what all these professionals do. And this is why your, your lights are on instantaneously and the air conditioner kicks on. And it's, it's amazing. Like just take for granted what oh, yeah. we all take comfort in every day. Big time, you know, and I love the fact that you are encouraging employers to open up their doors to have people yeah. come by. Cause I think the other tangent that is like, most people might not think about is when parents pull into that parking lot and see, you know, an $80,000 truck, a $100,000 truck, you know, yep. uh, we make great money and drive usually pretty nice vehicles with tow hitches to tow around toys and things. And so, you know, that, <laughs> That's exactly right. like that subtle notion that you might right. have dirt underneath your fingernails, but that does not mean you don't have like, you know, toys and you're usually debt free, which is pretty, pretty nice. Well, and that, that's what I was just thinking. As soon as you start that apprenticeship and to your point earlier, the word apprenticeship, I think has kind of left the vocabulary yes. a little bit because everyone's right. gone to college. Okay. So what is an apprenticeship? Well, it's a, it's a, it's a career training program that's been around for hundreds of years, right. For all of these crafts. And, and I think it's just that opportunity to say, hey, if I'm going to be a plumber or an electrician or HVAC tech, I'm going to learn the skill that I will always have with me and I get paid for it. Yes. So it's a pretty, pretty nice deal. It is. And, you know, you're right. We did take that out of our vocabulary. And yeah. I, I think we also, we did a pretty uh, good job on taking the word mentorship out of the vocabulary as well, which is sad, you know, it was right. Oh, you're, you're failing in math. Let's get you a mentor. You know, like it was, it had a stigma behind it instead of being this uplifting opportunity to learn right. more than that. When you're an apprenticeship, you find mentors and it's, Oh, it's the best give back ever. Right. Absolutely. Well, we know the careers are plentiful and amazing yep. and terrific. And I mean, I, it's something that always cracks me up when I walk onto a job site, I feel like I have family, you know, it's you're right. around people who love what they get to do. Right. But Taking a step back again into the student role, yeah. what are some things that a student should think about or consider, you know, before deciding is a trade for me or not? And I also have my thoughts on this, but what are your thoughts? <laughs> so I would say if, if anyone is looking to start a career or transition to a career in these three trades, I, I think first and foremost, people need to take the notion out that, well, I've never done plumbing before. Well, Neither has anybody else who started. So, so, you know, again, that's where the apprenticeship comes in. But yes. I think what's really important, you know, if if I were to name, if I were to list off three things that would be valuable in this industry, I would say first and foremost, your interpersonal communication. You know, if you are working with homeowners every day, and it's going to be a different home every day with a different person and a different project, and if you can easily create that rapport and communication with that homeowner to walk them through what needs to be diagnosed and how we're going to fix it. I think that's a world of difference. You know, I, I know a lot of contractors, you know, recruit and hire with that um, hire for character, train for skill. You know, if, if you have the right integrity and character, we can teach you the technical part. That's the easy part. And it's really important that you fit into that. I think another trait to have is problem solving. You know, you're going to be faced with something different every day. And how do we how do we fix it? How do we go through that, that issue? And then thirdly, you know, people who like to move and, and be active throughout the day and not stuck at a desk, you know, I think, I think that's a, a world of difference as well. If you want to be moving and active and moving equipment and parts, you know, this is the perfect place for you. Oh, big yeah. time. Yeah. I do not function well at a desk. This uh, lunchtime is like the most contained I am to sitting <laughs> all week. Um, but you're right. So many of those things are right. You know, 
I think back on my career past attitude has been what got me the farthest, you know, and I don't have a college degree and, you know, uh, these things to keep in mind for students, it's really, it's really important. And you're right. Who cares if you haven't done plumbing? <laughs> Nobody has. <laughs> you really, and, and that's the thing that's so exciting is especially students now who are kind of wondering what they should do next. There right. are, there are so amazing, or so many amazing opportunities that you can earn while you learn. Yep. And then if you decide you want to go back to college for something, you can like. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if I learn how to be an electrician, no one can take that away from me. I will always have that skill set. You know, so it's, it's, if you go to college, it's just a bonus, right? But yeah. you know, those skills that you can always take with you. It is, it is absolutely amazing. So um, for all the folks watching, where can we find more information on Explore the Trades and then also Ready, Set, Skilled? Like yeah, <laughs> yep. So, so our website is explorethetrades.org or if you type in readysetskilled.org, it'll lead you right to the information. That's fantastic. And I hope uh, a lot of folks take advantage of that because, you know, take these quizzes, explore, find out. You might be introduced to a career path you didn't even know existed, you know. Exactly. Working in plumbing does not mean you just sit and touch toilets all day long. If you want to, that's fine. You know, I yeah. do a lot of volunteer work, but yeah, it, it does. There's so many other things behind it. So uh, yeah, I do hope everybody uh, explores the trades at Explore the Trades. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Hey, thank you so so much for joining us again. This was yeah. fantastic. Um, I really appreciate. Uh, you coming back and sharing all the good updates. So, um, and Zach, thanks Thank for joining you. us. Uh, Zach, what did you think about today? I loved it. Um, Kate, I'm so thankful for the work that uh, you and your organization are doing, giving people the tools uh, and especially meeting kids where they're at. You don't have to have it all figured out yet. Try this on. Let's try this on. Exactly. Um, don't, I, I fully agreed with that, you know, the, the mentality approach of Nobody knows if you're going to like this yet, but it may right. make you wildly successful and happy. And I think that's the dream we want for, for all of our kids, um, you know, everywhere. So yep. amen to that. <laughs> Just throw the good spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. Who knows? Yeah, too. Right. right. I love it. Well, uh, Kate, thank you so much again for joining us. And Zach, thank you uh, for being an awesome fill-in co-host. It was great to thank chat you. and hang out with you again this week. Um, I'm sure we're going to have you fill in again so we can geek out about power tools at some point um <laughs> and uh for all of our fans watching tune in next week where we're going going to be interviewing jason strickland uh he handles the curriculum or he's a curriculum specialist with the georgia college system of georgia and so really excited to hear about all of his information and again you can find out uh all of our information and watch shows at sefka.org and also you can text career path to 31996 and hey check out all of the social media stuff we're posting there's a lot of good information on some scholarships out there right now too so free money all right so uh thank you again and i will see you uh zach i'll see you in the future kate you as well thanks again Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. -bye.